One, hello, and welcome to panels. Now, normally, this is where I would say something where we compare ourselves to a TV talk show, but hmm, this week is kind of have a cloud over us this week as we got some not so pleasant news. Chadwick Bozeman, very talented actor. Most of y'all know him as T'Challa, the Black Panther. Passed away yesterday. Very sad news. Kind of took the wind out of my sails yesterday. How about you? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and it, it's it's interesting. Certainly sad, sad news. Um, uh, but it's 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 really interesting. I found it really interesting. You know, nor oftentimes I don't know about you, but when key figures, notable notable people, uh, pass on, it's kind of uh, become for me become become kind of a reaction to to Google their name and just check out you know their life, um, and I you know I had not really even. It hadn't even crossed my mind when I looked looked at looked him up uh, last night, but uh, there's not a whole lot of information um, about him. And at first, I was, was kind of taken aback by that. But the more I've I've had time to to process that, I really respect that um, that he seems to have been a, a very private person, and. Uh, let basically let his work speak for itself. Um, I will say his, you know, probably his most notable role is as Black Panther. Um, for me, that's not my favorite movie with him. Uh, not even close, honestly. Um, uh, I would say my my favorite roles he played were Jackie Robinson in 42. Yay! And, um, also, uh, uh, James Brown and Get On Up. Um, those two are excellent, excellent movies. If you haven't watched either of those, check them out. Um, very, very good. Um, but yeah, it's uh, and you know, I didn't, I did not even know that he was battling cancer for, uh, they said four, four years. That's uh, that's a long time. Uh, so yes, he, it is. Um, again, you go to the. You know, he seems he was a private person, and uh, um, I, you know, I respect that. I respect that, and like I said, you know, let his 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 work speaks for itself. Um, in a day and age where everybody just puts everything on blast for the the Twitter universe, et cetera, et cetera, you know, a, a man like him just you know chooses to to let his his work speak for itself. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up 42 because that's really the first movie I saw him in a leading role mm -hmm. and loved him in that movie. Um, also, Gods of Egypt. Mm. He was in that too. And it's very funny, flamboyant role. He was something that awesome. he's normally not known for. So yeah. he was pretty funny in that one. He was thought, it's been a while since I've watched that. Wasn't he thought, thought I, I believe? That's how he thought that was the character he played. I don't remember the character's name. I think it. In that movie. Was. I was just shocked and surprised to see him in it. And that way he did that character. I was like, whoa, OK. <laughs> yeah. And also, of course, my all time favorite performance of his was on Saturday Night Live. Black Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> Raisins. <laughs> if you're, if you do not know what we're talking about, do yourself a favor. YouTube, Google it. Black Jeopardy. Chad, Chadwick Boseman. It is hilarious. You, you must see that. That is hilarious. But most definitely took the win of ourselves. Was not expecting it. Received several messages from coworkers and friends and. And family, and it was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. And of course, your first reaction whenever somebody sends you a message about somebody passing up, passing away, is like, nah, -uh. <laughs> stop lying. Because if it doesn't pop up in the Google feed, it's not true. And sure enough, 
And I was like, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. Yeah. Gone too soon. Yep. So we're going to echo everybody else and say rest in power, not in peace, rest in power, Wakanda forever, number 42. So now we're going to move on to our next thought balloon hot topic. <sighs> Maybe it's time for a break. I don't know. But New Mutants had their movie premiere. And it didn't do so high. Is it time to take a break from comic book movies? I don't think it's time to take a break. Um, I think it's time to um, perhaps take a closer look at the material that's being developed into movies. Um, there is a, just a treasure trove of fantastic material out there that, um, you know, with a lot of the, the movies that have, have been good, you, you know, it's clear they have people that know what they're doing. They're, you know, they're, they're pick, they're making some good selections of, of source material to, to turn into. Uh, movies and, and TV projects and just all of the above. Um, but there's been some big misses too. Um, I think, you know, part of this, uh, the lack of success for New Mutants so far, uh, number one, the, the pandemic. Um, whatever movie <laughs> is going to be out there right now probably well into next year is just not going to be successful right off the bat. Um, and I think it's, uh, you know, you, you've seen some movies in the last couple of months being made available to, to rent earlier than they normally would. Um, and I don't think they have the, the price point set right yet. Um, I understand they want to make, you know, they want to make the, the money on some of these big, uh, big, big money projects. Um, they have to recoup some of the cost, but uh, $25, $30 just isn't worth it to, to someone like me. I can, uh, I can wait. I can, you know, even if it's a, just a, a movie that, you know, I'm itching to see, I have no problem waiting a year two years, however long I have to wait for it to, to be on, you know, whatever streaming uh, service to, to become a, uh, available on that. Uh, I can wait. <laughs> so um, I think it's uh, an opportunity for, uh, for, for all these uh, movie production companies to, uh, to come up with a new model. Uh, what that is, I don't know, but uh, whatever they've tried so far, doesn't work. <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah, I've, uh, reviews so far of New Mutants, not the best. Uh, what I'm looking forward to, um, I had seen um, that uh, the uh, part of the, the credits, um, they're, this being the last uh, X-Men movie that Sony is putting out, um, they did not do like a post credits teaser, um, like has become the the norm in all of a lot of these comic book movies. Um, but they did um, do some. Uh, I don't remember all the details, but some some type of feature with uh, the uh, a lot of the classic New Mutant characters and tying that into the uh, one of the. Um, uh, original artists, uh, Bob McLeod, um, and apparently when it does eventually get released on uh, DVD or, or digital, there's going to be a further ex ex expansion on that, some commentary, which uh, I would uh, definitely be in interested in the movie just for that, because uh, I'm, a, I'm a New Mutants fan. So, um, but yeah, honestly, uh, 
I don't know that if it's any in any of our local theaters, but I'm in no rush to go see it. I can, I can wait. <laughs> Even if there wasn't a pandemic, it really would have to be a very big draw for me to leave the comforts of my home to go sit in a theater and see this movie where I can't pause it, rewind it, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, for me, I think it is time to take a little break from traditional superhero movies, maybe go outside of the box. Because Avengers, to, to be honest, Avengers Endgame, nobody's going to top that. <laughs> I mean, they probably could, but right now anything would be an imitation of that. Yeah. Um, that was pretty much the end game. Right. I think the 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 one thing that I I feel both the comics, the source material, and the movies need to have in common is a strong villain. Not necessarily, you know, the overpowered and and you know, one hundred and ten percent evil. You know, not not that type of strong. Um, a complex, um, intricate, uh, you know, not not just a ha 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 evil laugh. I'm going to get you because I'm the bad guy type kind of villain. Um, and with Endgame and so many of the what Phase Three, I guess the majority of the Phase Three movies focusing in on on Thanos who one of my favorite Marvel villains um, is um, is complex. And I think anything in phase four, um, I don't think they can go a route of trying to top that. Uh, not that they couldn't, um, I, I just, I, I feel that that's probably not the best route to go. Um, I, I feel maybe they need, uh, you know, space out the movies a little more. Uh, we need fewer um, quality, not quantity. Um, and, uh, you know, just take a step back for a while. Uh, focus on, uh, you know, some of the individual characters uh, you know some of the, the smaller the smaller stories uh, I you know with uh, me my you know if, if I had a uh, you know there's some projects that I, I, I'm looking forward to um, I have uh, kind of felt the uh, kind of urge to see Daredevil on the big screen again um, with the Netflix series being canceled uh, which uh, out of all the Marvel Netflix uh, shows, uh, I, I think that was the best. Uh, yeah, um, season three, uh, and I feel it's rare that TV shows where their strongest season is like you know later on in in the series. I I felt like Daredevil is one of those rare shows that as it goes on, it just season season two is better than season one. Season three was better than one and two combined. Season three was just phenomenal. Um, if you're a Frank Miller fan, uh, Daredevil Frank Miller fan, you you will love season three. Um, but uh, yeah, I would I would like to uh, I'd like to see Daredevil on the, the big screen again. I think I think uh, that would be really good. Yeah, I think we had like a one two punch. Because I brought up Avengers Endgame, which was a huge spectacle mm -hmm. and very satisfying. The other, I would say The Right, which brought in a lot of critical acclaim and made people sit up and pay attention, was Joker. Mm. So maybe we need more stuff like that. Like New Mutants were supposed to be more of a horror movie slant, 80s type movie. Maybe instead of just flirting with it, they should have just leaned all the way into it and just blow it out. Because even though Batman was not in Joker, he was there. Yeah. The yeah. presence was there. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So if if we're going to have comic book movies, I think we need to have it branch out and be unapologetically new. Yeah. The the thing that was, um, I think, really put Joker um, over the top was that it was accessible for both comic fans and just movie fans. Um, it had that kind of just multiple audiences uh, pulling them in for you know various various reasons and and a lot of people who you would not have thought would be into it you know really liked it um so yeah it's uh gonna need that uh more movies with that kind of cross you know crossing the lines type of appeal yeah definitely so haven't seen it haven't really read the reviews i've seen numerous trailers and all the stuff from comic con i'm excited to see it because it's adapting one of my favorite new mutant storylines from back in the day so Whenever it gets released to rent on demand or it pops up in the stores, I will be getting a copy. But until then, it's just going to exist out there in the world, wherever. <laughs> <laughs> I shall not be going to a theater to see it. Do you think, here, here's, here's a thought, do you think with, with Disney now having control of the X-Men, do you think the potential lack of success New Mutants has. Is that going to shell, potentially shell the X-Men for Disney, do you think? No. Because that movie was, that movie was already, to my knowledge, I want to say out, ready Mm -hmm. to come out. It was done. They had to do some reshoots and retouching or whatever when all the mergers talk started happening. So I don't, I don't think that's going to derail them. I think they just put it out because they were tired of people asking when it was going to come out. (laughs) So it's like, okay, here it is. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, okay, you just kind of slammed it on out there, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I'm still excited for it. I still want to see what they did with it. I'm still curious. I'll just see magic, Mm, a real life version of magic, which have we ever seen her in anything? Cartoons? I think there was a video game with her in it. Uh, Future fight, maybe. Could have been. I'd have to, I'd have to look it up. But yeah, I I can't recall seeing in anything animated or or otherwise off the top of my head. So yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. That'll probably be. A, I, I don't think I have interest in even renting it digitally when it comes out. Um, but when you can borrow it on DVD or Blu-ray, <laughs> um, I'll I'll be looking for for that. So. When I get the Blu-ray, you can borrow it, <laughs> or maybe I get one that has the DVD and Blu-ray. You can have the DVD. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to our next stop balloon hot topic: collectibles. Me personally, I don't do collectibles. I'm I'm cool with the comics. Um, if I get one, somebody gives me one, I shall treasure it I, and try I, to keep it dust free. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I, I'm a fan. Um, I now I, it's not something I invest a lot of money in, um, but you know. Um, if I see something on sale, uh, I will scoop it up in a heartbeat. Um, I, <clears throat> I, I love having collectibles, you know, little, uh, I love displaying, you know, on my shelves, all kinds of, you know, action figures and bobbleheads, uh, Funko Pops. Uh, now, do you keep them in the box or do you actually take them out of the box? I um it it depends on on what it is if it's like a a fun pop uh i keep those in the box um action figures um i keep those in the box now um now if it was something like a a lego playset i can't resist the urge on something like that i i gotta 
put put something like that together. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, um, I I I love it all. I don't like I said I'm not a, a big investor in in collectibles, but anything I can get get my hands on that you know I like I said I see a sale, I'll I'll scoop that up. Um, but uh, you know I think that's uh, a big draw for for um, for some people. Um, you know, uh, some shops. I think uh, you can uh, comic shops. You can you can see just by their inventory that they they have. Uh, they I'm assuming they have the clientele that shells shells out good money for for some of these pieces. I mean, you see some of the 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 larger um, the uh, the larger statues and and whatnot. We're talking like four. Five hundred dollars for some of these, and like for who has, yeah. who has this kind of money? <laughs> some, and some all I can all I can see is it being on the floor in the itty bitty little pieces. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, now, he, I guess here's the question on that: if you so, if you uh, let's just say you money 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 is not uh, a question for you. And you're, you know, you're, you, you win the, the lottery or you get, uh, you know, a, a huge promotion where you're, you're, you're making just buckets of cash. Um, you're still obviously, you know, into the things you're into. You, you still love reading your comics and, and whatnot. Are you now, now, you know, you walk into the comic shop and, you know, money is no object. You see this large Batman figurine that you know oh that's kind of that's kind of cool uh, you know what impulse buy that i'm taking that home are you are you now a a collectibles person no no okay <laughs> it's it's not the money it's the fact that i have a lot of nieces and nephews who love my room anyway mm -hmm. so they like to come in with their hands and right right Oh, can I? Oh, can I? Can I oh, and if they see a figurine, that's going to translate to toy. And before I can get back to it and get back to them, I can see them dropping it or getting something sticky all over, and I had to kill them. <laughs> now, now, this actually brings up a really good point, though. Um, in an industry that you know, I think I don't. I don't think it's a dying industry. I think there are things that absolutely need to be figured out, improved on, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, just you saying, you know, your nieces and nephews getting that urge to get into, you know, something cool that you have. Um, is you know, perhaps collectibles, having those on hand, a good thing for, you know, someone who has, has those younger, uh, younger people in their life to maybe spread the, you know, um, the, the wonderful hobby that we enjoy. Um, because it for me it, it kind of ties in, you know. I think back to my younger days, and a lot of it was, you know, seeing, you know, what my friends had, you know, whether that was toys or comics or whatever it was. Seeing what they had, getting my hands on it, then planting that seed. Ooh, I love this. I want this. Um, does that change your <laughs> your thought at all? The the only thing the only way that will change <laughs> regarding collectibles is if I had like my own office man cave space. <laughs> then yeah. you will see all sorts of things because I would deck that place out. If I could have like a lock and key, nobody else can get into it unless they have the key. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm telling you, they they make a beeline to my mm -hmm. collection and oh, yeah. with comics they can just the way i have mine displayed they can just look without touching 
And then I can come over or or else they might pull out a pack or whatever. It's like, oh, can I read or can I look? And depending on which niece and nephew it is, the answer is yes or no. (laughs) Some of them are very, very good about getting it and and handling it with care. Some of them is like, no, not even if I took it out myself and turned the pages for you. No, you're too destructive. Yeah. So yeah, with me, collectibles would have to be, I have to have my own fortress of solitude because I got the bat cave already. Yeah. That's what they call it, the bat cave. Can I go in the bat cave? Because <laughs> all the movies, all the cartoons, video games, comics, anything that make a child go, ooh, is in the bat cave. And so that's what they call it when they get here. Can I go in the bat cave? So I would have to have a fortress of solitude if I'm going to go collectibles. And if I do get one, then yeah, you'll start seeing all sorts of statues and figurines and bookshelves and glass cases. And Mm -hmm. oh yeah, it'll be pimped out. It'll be nerd paradise. But until that day happens, Yeah, I uh, just uh, something, uh, a facet of collectibles that seems to be real popular right now, just the Funko Pops. I, I wonder how long the, the craze, I don't know that I would say craze, but you know, um, how long is it going to go? I, I, I see Funko Pops being popular for for quite some time myself. Uh, oh yeah, because I've seen a lot of those. It's just like, you know what, I want all of these. <laughs> yeah. um, I think it appeals to multiple types of fans, multiple types of collectors. Um, you know, it's not just comic book related, it's movies and TV, um, just all of the above. Um, you name it, it's probably ha- it probably has a Funko Pop uh, out there for you to, to go try and find. Um, I think the pricing on them is is a- attractive. Uh, seems like the average piece is ten dollars, uh, if that. Um, so I mean, it's it's very very accessible. I think. Um, so I I, I think it it lasts some time, uh, and, you know, I don't think it's going to be forever, but, uh, who knows, who knows, uh, do they, do they hold their value if you're, you know, if you collect for, for the value, I, I honestly don't know, I haven't looked into them that, uh, that much, but, uh, I, you know, seems like, a um, the people who are into it really get into it, so it's kind of cool. Yeah. Because the Funko Pops, most definitely. I think I pieced together an X-Men team. <laughs> I know I pieced together an Avengers team. But it's like, yeah, A, I do not want to have them all over the floor, out of a box, peanut butter and jelly and donut glaze and Lord knows what else. <laughs> and then the other part is, because I probably am going to take it out the box. The one I got for my birthday, they got me a Dark Phoenix Funko Pop. It came out the box, and it is currently guarding my PS4 games. And I have to dust it. (laughs) (laughs) Which I do not mind, but I came through one day, and I was like, Gene, looking a little snowy up here. Let me do something about this. Cause I don't, I don't know why, but my room is always a dust magnet. I have no idea why. Same smoke alarm and dust. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. But what I do have an idea of is stay tuned for part two of our fourth episode. We'll be right back after these messages. Recording. And welcome back from the commercial break. 
So we had a commercial break and hopefully we didn't have one because you know how annoying YouTube is with their commercial breaks. They're not playing right <laughs> at all. You can be in the middle of a very good scene and blam, mm -hmm. commercial. And don't miss the countdown. <laughs> so hopefully you avoided all of that. So we're back. I'm Chris. This is Paul. And we're back to finally give us or give you our secret origins. Because in the first episode, we just kind of jumped on in and we've been plowing on along. So we're going to slow it down and give you a peek behind the curtain and show you guys what we're all about and why we're so experienced in the whole comic book game. But we're going to do it a little differently. We're going to have like a speed round, a lightning round, where we ask each other questions about our comic book origins. So, Paul, if you're ready. I'm ready. Here we Ryan Seacrest Pauls. Go. First comic book you ever got. The uh, first first one I ever purchased was uh, Uncanny X Men two eighty six. Um, off the top of my head, I don't recall what what was weird. art this was, but this had arc it, the classic cover has Archangel flying up in the air, arms outstretched. Um, it was a weird one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was very weird. My first comic was actually in one of those packs that used they used to sell in stores. So my first comics, it was four of them, it was Avengers 234, Uncanny X-Men 171, Fantastic Four 258, and some Spider-Man comic book with Venom on the last page, Escaping the Baxter Building. So I did good with the first pack. Yeah. How old were you when you got your first comic book? Oh, I was, um, I believe I was probably 13, maybe 14. Um, just at that uh, young age where I have enough independence to ride my bike to the uh, the the local uh, now this was uh, this wasn't from our local comic store. It was from our local uh, trading cards store. The the dugout was the the name of it. Uh, this was as, as a youngster. This was my favorite place to be because um, it just had all the all the stuff I was into: uh, baseball cards, football cards, basketball cards, and then they eventually opened up to have comics as well. Um, and that is where I, I purchased my first comic. So you were older and you had a comic book store to go to. I was younger. I was about six or seven, somewhere in there. And comics for me came from spinner racks in drugstores, grocery stores. There was always KMB or Eckers that I sold comic books back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, then Walmart came along and they had it in their magazine section. So I didn't make it to a comic book store until 1999, actually. And my mind was blown. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> wall so to wall, everything I ever wanted. When when you got that that first pack of, of comics, what was your what was your reason for, for getting that? Spider Man and his amazing friends. And the episode that came on before we left to do running run errands with mom mm -hmm. was the origin of firestar okay which is really like the fir first animated exposure of the x-men so i recognized wolverine mm -hmm. but the one that i really recognized and it was like ooh, ooh, ooh was storm the white hair the glowing eyes mm -hmm. so it was like oh that's her from the cartoon and then i recognized wolverine because you know to have the floating head Mm -hmm. box yeah. back in the day. So mm -hmm. I recognized all of those people. And then the Avengers issue was on the other side and I recognized Cyclops. I didn't know who anybody else was, but <laughs> I recognized Cyclops. So yeah. that that's what made me go, I want this versus He-Man. Yeah. 
yeah, that's and that's all. Um, it's all very, very interesting. Um, I think between the both of us, you know, it's very mutual that you know our early interest was very much from some of the animated series that were were out there, um, and that you know kind of those displays that were just strategically placed uh, you know in various stores kind of connect those dots for 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 youngsters um you know if they've just you know if, if you're out grocery shopping with your with your your folks or something and you've just watched you know that spider-man cartoon or that x-men cartoon or batman cartoon you know, you see that display, you're like, "Ooh, mom, dad, can I, can I get this?" <laughs> and hope, you know, hopefully you've behaved during the trip, and and hopefully that, you know, equaled uh, a yes from mom or dad, and and you know, you go home. Oh happy. no, you you want to know what did it? <laughs> hmm. He man was approximately four or five bucks. Those comics were was a dollar, so that was a slam dunk. Yes. <laughs> it's like that's all you want put it in here yeah and that's how the madness started okay it's like okay you don't want a five dollar action figure you want a 60 cent <laughs> book okay fine <laughs> or 75 cents or a dollar or whatever it, it was costing it's like yeah. yeah you can get it fine yeah I think for for me, um, on top of you know those impulse type kind of buys and the all the classic animated series that were were out there, um, for me um, very much influenced by my circle of, of friends um, in school. Um, those early teen years, my, my circle was definitely full of just dorks, <laughs> absolute nerds. Um, and geeks on this side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so, you know, it, it became a thing eventually just to, you know, who among the circle, whoever was the, the one to bring in the newest copy of wizard magazine when you were the you were the top dog <laughs> you were it you were the leader yeah yeah um and but, everybody uh, picked it apart who gets the poster who gets the card mm -hmm, who gets <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and that uh that definitely influenced my my love for for comics uh those those early years just uh seeing all the the different uh comics that my friends would bring in um the uh um probably my first uh now the the frank miller dark knight came out much earlier than me developing my interest but that kind of darker side of batman really kind of drew me in the uh, some of the nightfall um the nightfall books uh that that was uh in in junior high i believe that was that was coming out for for me when i was in junior high and that was that was just uh that was one of the hot books uh back then and my, my friend was bringing that in and i was like, oh this is i didn't know batman could be this this wonderful <laughs> um, so here here's a good one when you first started, Marvel or DC? I've flip flopped so many times over the years that I just I, I feel like I've lost count. Um, early on, with the exception of X Men, definitely DC. Um, I was the opposite, Marvel. Yeah, I was a Marvel zombie. Okay. <laughs> until I got to college. Mm. And again, that spinner rack just followed me around. Yeah. <laughs> In the student union building, there was a spinner rack. Oh, wow. And it's like, 
I got that X-Men. I got that one. Generation X number one had just came out. And it's like, I already have that. I was mm-hmm. bored, had some extra coins. And I saw New Titans. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I saw that. And I saw Justice League of America. And it's like, well, you know what? Super Friends, I, I'll read it. Mm-hmm. So I bought those two. And then, you know, it was it was a done deal after that. So yeah. I started out die hard Marvel, mm-hmm. but now it's both of them, Marvel and DC. Yeah. Did uh, you know? And and still to this day, you know, we're very much the the big two. Um, was you know there? Obviously, there are many more uh, than other than Marvel and DC. Um, when uh, in the early '90s, when when Image came out, was there any? Uh, what you know? What did even if you didn't read many of the image titles, was there any influence? You know, when that happened, when image formed, any influence on your reading habits back then? The deal with image, I don't know if new if they were prepped for newsstand for the spinner rats back in the day. Yeah. Spawn showed up more than anything else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I had a lot of the early Spawn issues because it was Todd McFarlane and he did Spider Man yeah. and it was all dark and gritty and oh, yeah. I can't believe this. And, uh, and <laughs> just just quick, uh, I, I talked to you about this the other day. I had um, gone back and 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 read some old school early issues of Spawn and it got, it was just so refreshing because you you have a poster in the middle. You have um you have the letters the letters page in the back you, you have you know just all these extras that you know you see them here and there in comics now but not so much not so much um it was just it it was such a, a great nostalgic read for me that uh, was, man if i could go if i could go back <laughs> Which, you know, with reading back issues, uh, there, there's no, you know, there's so many great nostalgic things you can do to revisit your past. You know, if you, if you go back and watch a, a movie that you loved when you were a youngster, it doesn't always hold up. Um, I feel like... Uh, the a lot of the comics that I, I I liked when I was younger, they still hold up to today's standards. It, that's kind of kind of rare. Some of them are actually better. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There are certainly certainly uh, many that age age well, definitely. So yeah, Image was kind of like the dark horse, and. That's why I really didn't get into them like I did Marvel and DC because they mm-hmm. just weren't there. And if they were, it was like one here, like you you can get Wildcats issue three, but the next time you saw Wildcats was like 13 or 14 and you're like, yeah. I, I don't know what happened. This is, I'm completely lost. So yeah. Wizard, the guide to comics was your, in my neck of the woods, the gateway to image comics and what was going on with them. Yeah. But I got a really good question for you. What is the dumbest thing that you ever did with your comics when you first started out? Um, hmm. You know, um, I will say it's it's kind of a double double edged sword for me, and it's actually throughout throughout my my lifetime even more recent um i have have always had the mentality with with comics that you know i'll I'll read something and i'll enjoy it i'll get excited about it to the to the i just can't contain it and i'm you know to my circle or you know people that i just 
just no coworkers, friends, etc. I I have to get them into it too. I, you know, I have to I have to share it. And I'm like, you got to read this. You you got to read this. And not you know, they may or may not want it, and not to be shoving it. In. <laughs> like, no, you have to read this. Um, so I've probably been, you know, from start to to even now, probably a little too uh, giving. Uh, and have, you know, lent out uh, issues and graphic novels that I probably did not want to give up because, you know, there's been some that I didn't get back. <laughs> so, but, you know, at the end of the day, if there's just that slim chance they might have, have read it and enjoyed it, you know, not maybe not as much as I did, but, you know, there's there's just that potential to 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 share that enjoyment that you know at the end of the day it's it's worth it so <laughs> yeah you just have to find that person see i vet people out very quickly um i'll, I'll try them out with one and see how they do with one and if it takes yeah. them too long to get that one back if i have to ask yeah. for it chances are you're not getting another shot <laughs> Yeah, and I kind I kind of see that you know I think in our you know when we we first met you know I want to say you you lent uh, you had like one issue you let me borrow and then you know next time you know it was like five or six and next thing you know it's like a whole stack so I, I kind of see that gradual you're testing the water seeing establishing that level of trust um, and. Uh, so yeah, you know, with with our, you know, that that's a good a good method to take with that. You know, just gonna test the water, see see what kind of response you get from a person. Give them something that you know is kind of good, but not the best. Something that you you're willing to part with. <laughs> see yeah, because I'm I'm trusting you with my child. <laughs> yes, yes. You can't you can't take my child and then just do them any kind of way and then bring them back a year later and say, oh yeah here. Yeah. It's like this is not how that child left my house. <laughs> we're we're about to have an issue. You're holding an issue. We're gonna have an issue about the issue. Yeah. The dumbest thing I did, and I I don't even want to call it dumb. Is is dumb now, because I'm older and I know better. But back in the day, I figured out I can get a comic book faster than I can get an action figure. And this was back in the days where action figures ruled and toy departments were everything. Mm -hmm. And Christmas time, there was all these catalogs that came out that was just like the best thing ever. So I figured out in my little, my little child brain that I can get comics way faster than I can get action figures. So if I look at these comics and I, I would read them, and words I did not know, I would go ask my mom and she made me go look them up. <laughs> and of course, Techno Organic is not in Webster's Dictionary. So there was there was a lot of words I had to piece together and figure this stuff out. But there were a lot of pictures in these comic books and they were very posy. So my, my, my ingenious brain was like, you know what? We can take these pictures and you know, girls have paper mache dolls. So why don't I just make paper action figures out of these folks? Oh, so no, I would no. cut. Oh, yes. No, no. Oh no. Would after I read them and I was done reading them, here I am with the scissors, cutting out pictures of Batman, Superman, X Men, all of them. And then I got very smart because paper is very fragile. So if you're taking your finger and you're moving around like action figures on the floor, <laughs> it will tear. I'm in elementary school. Let's get some construction paper and glue that bad boy to the construction paper. Make them tougher. So I had my comics that had holes in them. <laughs> I had a little bucket with all my little paper figures. And that's when all the writing and all the other stuff came to be. Because I would sit there for hours with all of my, I mean, Marvel superhero Secret Wars was out. That had everybody. Yeah. I cut that bad boy all the way up. 
And my cousin oh. would sit there. He would come over and not say anything. I would just be on the floor with all these little paper figures and I move them and they're going here and Galactus is doing this and nah, 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 nah. and he would just sit there to finally, you know, he'll do something to get my attention and I look up and he's like, keep going because this is interesting. I want to know what happens next. So there was a purpose, but looking back on it, it's like, oh, I cut up a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff that was oh, worth a lot of money. Yeah. Not that I care about that, but it's like now it's like I'm looking back at all these older issues. Like, oh, yeah, I cut that picture out. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best of both worlds. I had something yeah. to read and I had the toys. Toys. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I would say that would be the dumbest thing I did with my collection. Mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> What do you what do you say we move on to some reviews? Yes, the triple B reviews, where we look over comics and we rate them in three ways: buy it, borrow it, or burn it. <laughs> and the first one that we have up: three jokers. Buy it. I have a very interesting thing here. I'm going to say borrow it. And the reason why I'm going to say borrow it is because I'm kind of on Joker OD right now. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I had every intention of reading it and getting into it. And I'm all worked up for it, excited. But yeah. I was just like, ah, I need a break from the Joker. Yeah. Um, I, I definitely, I, I, I feel you on that. Um, and when I say buy it, it's not an enthusiastic buy it, just simply for 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 that over exposure. Um, for me, however, the number number one reason why I say buy it, the um, the art is just second to none. Um, any anything that's uh, out right now, it's just second to none. Uh, the art by uh, Jason Fabok, um, just incredible. He is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so for for that reason alone, it's, it's definitely a buy it for me. Um, fortunately, I would say buy the trade. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I you know, um, but if having already bought number one, am I going to wait for the trade? No, I'm just going to get two and three. But uh, yeah, that definitely at the end of the end of the day, the the trade might be the best option for for uh, if you're if you're jokered out right now. Um, yeah, that might be the best option. But yeah, still buy it. <laughs> yeah, there there are some very good moments in there rooted in continuity, mm -hmm. which which had me on the edge of my seat. It was just like it's too much Joker right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much. Yeah. X Factor number two. I am going to go with borrow it on this one. Um, after the a, 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 what I felt was a, a good start with the, the first issue, this one felt like a bit of a bit of a filler. I think three has some potential um with uh with mojo um but the, yeah this kind of felt like uh just some in between a, a, a good start some in between three i think has has some potential looking looking forward to three i say buy it because it was just fun and rachel looked like a total <laughs> she was awesome in it yeah, he drew her so well. The new costumes, everything to me, it was it, it had some funny moments in there. To to me, it was just awesome. It was like, yeah, we're gonna get somewhere eventually, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was thoroughly entertained. Speaking of thoroughly entertained, Hellions number three. Um, I'm actually. 
feeling that one as a what, what a good borrow. <laughs> a good borrow. A good borrow. If you have Or do you mean access, steal it? <laughs> if you you know, if, if you walked into the comic book store with twenty bucks and your bill came to you know, let's say it came to seventeen dollars and, and you said to the to the clerk, you said, Man, hmm. I could almost get a, another comic with this. Can you spot me a dollar? And if they said, yeah, he will spot you a dollar. That'd Where be they do the that at? That'd be the one to pick up. <laughs> Borrow plus. <laughs> I say buy it. Okay. Now, was there a little too much of Madeline's I gotta hurt people to get people's attention stuff in there? Yeah. But just for Psylocke and Wild Child scenes and of course, Nanny still can't get up. Man. <laughs> there, there were there was enough other stuff in there that kept me in, and I, yeah. I'm still ready to see where this is going to go. Yeah. So yeah, most definitely a buy for me. Um, X Men Eleven. Buy it. Absolutely buy it. If you are a fan of Magneto, uh, buy it. Um. This one really, really hit some some good notes for me. Um, and yeah, just for Magneto. Uh, yeah, if you're a fan of Magneto, you you will. I think you will like X Men Eleven. Um, this is this is the act. Some of the action I've been waiting. On. It feels like there's been a bit of a, a lull. Um, and sometimes you, you you know you have to write. In that fashion to create those those lulls to 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 make that uh, call to action even more dramatic, and this was definitely dramatic. So yeah, buy it. <laughs> yeah, it was it was awesome, especially coming off of ten, mm -hmm. which kind of fell flat for a lot of people. Eleven was just like, this is what we needed. Didn't know I needed it, but we got it. Yeah. Uh, Empire Captain America number three. I did not get to this one yet. So, so in my stack. <laughs> so to be continued, but Empire Avengers number three, just like all the other ones, if you are a fan of that old school Avengers feel, this is going to be a buy for you like it was for me. But if you're not, it's a good borrow. It is a good borrow. And there were a lot of cool moments in there. Quicksilver had a very cool moment that was like, wow, OK, okay yeah. Cool. Somebody's using him to his full potential. All right. And it was funny. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Jim Zub. And I think this proves that he should have an Avengers title, maybe a companion series to Aaron's Avengers. Just let them go. Yeah. So if you like classic old school Avengers, it's a buy. If you know somebody like me, then borrow it from them because it's it's good. It's a good read. Um, Justice League Dark issue 25. Have you had a chance to get into that yet? Not yet. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> it's good? Dude. <laughs> Swamp Thing showed up and showed out. Very good. This is a huge, you need to break into a comic book shop and get this issue. <laughs> All right. It good. is awesome. It is so awesome. Ooh, it's so awesome. It, however, it kind of feels like they're going to wrap up the series, which, which bummed me out. I got that vibe when I was reading. It's like, no, please don't be wrapping everything up. Right, right. You know, Wait till you read it, and you're you're gonna be like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I I haven't the, seen the the cancellation notice on that or anything. I've been worried that I might see that soon. I just you know I can see it coming. I hope not, because uh, it's just been so good, so good. It's one of the he is killing it. He is killing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and wait till you, you see know, Swamp Thing in this issue. And, um, 
I had a, a thought today on one of the, um, and maybe we'll can segue into the indie spotlight here after this. Um, Joe Hill, are you are you familiar with with Joe Hill at all? Um, he's doing a number of the. Uh, he has those Hill House comics, plunge. Uh, Head full of ba uh, basket full of heads or something like that. Uh, I think it's like six, five or six titles that he has a DC imprint with right now. He did Lock and Key. Um, he writes uh, novels as well. He's actually uh, Stephen King's son. Um, very good writer. Um, and I actually prefer his comic book writing to his novel writing, but. He would, I think he would be, you know, once V is, you know, done, hit, concluded his run on Justice League Dark, Joe Hill would be so, so good on something like Justice League Dark. Um, would he have any interest in doing something like that? I don't know. He seems to prefer his, you know, creator, uh, his creator own type kind of content, you know, doing his own thing. I don't know that he would ever do something like that but that I, that would be just like a, a a good good fit on something like that but uh yeah um so yeah some of the indie indie books i've been reading uh lately that have been really good um new series that just came out uh last week i think was the first issue seven secrets uh by tom taylor um tom taylor writes the uh, deceased books and the injustice uh, books for DC, uh, which he's been killing it on both of those. Um, at seven seats, so Seven Secrets was really good. Um, I'm gonna, I bought the first issue. I'm gonna keep going on that. It was, it was really good. Um, one that I picked, uh, and speaking of Joe Hill, uh, there's a new Lock and Key series, which I hadn't actually read Lock and Key before. Um, but I think I'm going to go back and revisit some of those because this was really good. It was Lock and Key in Pale Battalion's Go, number one, uh, from IDW. And, and that was, it was good. Um, one of our favorite current writers for DC, just on fire with Batman, James Tinian IV. Uh, he has a, a series uh, with Boom Studios called Something is Killing the Children. Um, I picked up on issue number seven, and it was pretty good. Um, considering not fully committed, but I'm considering going back to pick up uh, from the beginning, see see what's going on there, because he's just uh, he can do no wrong. Uh, he is just so good, so good. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on IDW uh, number one hundred eight just came out. Uh, this last week, that one was, uh, it was, it was all right. Um, I think I had picked up on 105, uh, giving that a chance. And uh, I'm, I'm still going to keep going with it because uh, there's still that, the, the last Ronin storyline that's uh, coming out in the September that is supposed to be really, really good. I'm going to, I'm going to stick with it. Um, Spawn 309. Um, that was good. Had a, a first appearance of the gunslinger spawn. Um, and, uh, it was good. Uh, you know, 300, 309 ish, ish, issues into spawn, uh, and Todd McFarlane still, still has it. Um, great, great writing, great art. Um, and unlike all the other, the big two and all the other books out there, a measly three bucks a pop. Um, you, you can't, with Spawn, you can't go wrong for, for bang for your buck. Um, I'm glad you said that because I ran across something on YouTube, I'm trying to bring it up, uh, kind of like a documentary on Todd McFarlane. 
and I was watching that. I think it's on Sci-Fi Channel. Yeah, I watched that uh, a couple of weeks ago. That was really, really good. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, oh, I forget the name of that documentary. Uh, oh yeah, it's on Sci-Fi. Sci-Fi Wire. Todd McFarlane, like hell, I won't. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was really, really enjoyable. Um, he has definitely recommend checking that out if y'all yeah. haven't seen that because it's it's very entertaining. Yeah, it is. Um, I think you know, if you on the surface, um, you know, you 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 show somebody something like Spawn, and there's even even today there's there's some shock value to it, but what I I really love about it. it even to this day it's it's a love story about him and his wife and his his kids just um you know the basis of it is that he would do anything for his wife and kids and it's just it's it's amazing you can you know you take the time to to get past that that shock value um it's 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 a great story great story um, um but yeah yeah todd mcfarland definitely that that uh that documentary def definitely worth a watch and we got one final one teen titans annual two ah buy okay. it buy it okay good i'm really looking forward to to reading that uh, this has a lot of continuity okay. if you've been i know there's been a lot of people that's down on Damian Wayne. This issue will redeem him. Really? Really. Whoa. It's very, it's heavy, heavy, heavy in continuity. If you've been reading Batman good, good. for the last year and a half, two years, mm -hmm. this was like very logical. And this is why things have happened the way it did. Good. And it's like, wow, y'all, I got it standing on that one. That's, that's, that's really good. You know, Damien, out of out of any, I would say out of any characters, whether DC, Marvel, any of the rest, um, any of their characters, over the last couple of years, the one that's really grown on me has been Damien. Um, I he's, I wouldn't say he's quite my favorite Robin yet, but he, very. He's working soon, on he, it. Yeah, he's. He's going to be there um, very, very soon. Yeah. Wait till you read this and you're going to be like, whoa, yeah. yeah. And it leaves you in a place where you're excited to see what's going to happen next with him okay. and Batman. Okay, so, yeah. and, and, and the Teen Titans. All right. So definitely go out and buy that one. Don't sleep on it. <laughs> So that concludes our reviews for this week. What are you looking forward to next week? Um, now that we're not blown away by the two storms that try to take us out. Right. Um, Batman 98. Uh, Most definitely. Empire number six. Um, those are definitely Justice good. League 52 is coming out. So I'm very curious to see where that story is going. Let's see what else. Wolverine number five. Yep. New Mutants 12. And I know we've gone back and forth on him, but Cable number four is coming out. Um, three. And a whole bunch of true believers. Yeah. C Cable three was, was really good for a change. Um, that kind of has me concerned that four is going to kind of return to the less than stellar. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, How can we forget? How can we forget? 
Thor issue six. Oh, yes. Uh, buy it and buy one for your friend and buy one for their friend. Um, Just buy all the copies yeah. they have. If they, yeah, however many they have on the on the shelf, buy them all, and you know, keep one for yourself and get get the word out on 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 it to anybody who you can get get it, get it out to. Um, Thor six was just outstanding, epic. Yeah, just I'm I'm really turning into a fan of Donny Cates. All of his stuff is just new and fresh and. Yeah. Epic. <laughs> it's it's not uncommon for an issue to have a mic drop moment, um, but it is uncommon for one to have multiple. And this one had multiple. This one was just. And you know something I was thinking about today that I, I wanted to hit on with because this was a really good issue for for it. Um, You'll see a lot of a lot of books where the paneling, ha, ah, the panel, <laughs> the paneling will not be laid out. It's not the 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 layout. It's it's more the page to page. You 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 know you follow along the you know left to right bottom et cetera et cetera. You can't always help like your peripheral vision. You know when you, you turn the page. You're gonna see. Well, you're supposed to start on the, you know, the top left. You can't help but see out of your peripheral vision, like a, a big moment. And it, I, I think this is critical to, to a, a good, comic. It can make or break, because it, it can kind of spoil the moment. You'll see it before you you, you read it, and so you it's already spoiled. You know there's a big moment coming. Thor six lays it out perfectly so that you know you turn the page and it's like, whoa, <laughs> that was crazy. Um, it, and I I don't even know what the term for that is. I'm sure there is one, but storytelling it just it killed it on on in that aspect. Um, killed it with the storytelling. There was no. Yeah. You turn the page and like you said, you just blown completely away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was good. Uh, makes you want to go back, read the entire series. It's um, on my to-do list this weekend. <laughs> um, and definitely has me excited for where it's going. Um, and just, oh, there's so many good 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 moments that you know just oh that was uh and it, it one of those moments you know kind of like i was referring to where you just you can't help but have that you know you want to spread you want to go out and spread it you know you want as soon as i read that i was oh i gotta go get this to to so and so i gotta get this to so and so they're gonna they're gonna love it um yeah really really good issue Completely awesome. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us this week. Check out our Instagram CP panels where we post stuff all throughout the week. And eventually we're going to go live. I sense a live happening on Instagram where we're going to have a story or two or three or four. Yeah. Definitely little tidbits popping up here and there to let you know where we're going to be thought ballooning on our next episode. So yeah, give us, give us a comment. Give us a like or a thumbs down if you didn't like what you were hearing. Just give us give us your feedback. Definitely subscribe. Hit the subscribe. Uh, click the the bell for for notifications. Just all of the above. We want to hear from you. And with that, take it easy. <laughs>